Uh, before we begin, everyone take a look. I passed out quite a few things. There's the minutes from last meeting. Then there's the two proposals that Kyle will be going over. They're the campus uh, pharmacy prescription, uh, in addition to the tax and flat rate service. There's also the J Board bylaws floating around. Uh, I'll explain that one as when we get to it. Uh, but I think, so. thank you. Assuming this works, we're going to start with Kyle. Awesome, thank you. So, um, as many of you are aware, the Student Life Committee has been working on establishing a prescription delivery service on campus. This is part of our work with the Health Center that's been ongoing since this time last year. Go for it. So, um, just to get right into it, some background as to why we're pursuing this project. Students have been expressing um, general concerns regarding a lack of a centralized location to pick up prescriptions. There, the shuttle service Rite Aid, shuttle service CVS, etc. But for students who live off campus, students who live on, even on campus in the vicinity of the health center, establishing some kind of pharmacy service in the health center would be much more time efficient, much more effortless, and quicker to kind of receive the medication than it is to you know, drive to Rite Aid or CVS, order your medication, pick them up a day or two later and return. Um, there's also a shuttle pass currently offered by the health center. This only takes students to Samaritan. It doesn't directly service Rite Aid or CVS, so there's no real on-demand service. In general, then, the program benefits of establishing this can kind of be summed up in three points. One, location. Two, time efficiency. And three, lack of cost, as I'll get into in a moment. So. As I mentioned, this project came about through our work with the Health Center. We've been cooperating with Dr. Lawrence, the medical director, since around this time last year, both through our in-person and online surveying last year and through our Reddit post at the beginning of this year, we became aware that this was a major student concern. Students wanted a prescription delivery service, so we kind of made this our priority. Um, the project, how's it going guys? The project was initially shelved for the fall semester due to kind of legal concerns. You have to have a prescription, a, uh, sorry. You have to have a pharmacist available for, for counseling on whenever you're picking up prescription medication. However, following conversation with Dr. Sands, we became aware that this could be a possibility. Our initial approach was to try to set up a, um, try to set up a, partnership with a local pharmacy where they would kind of lend us one of their workers to work part-time in the health, oh my god. So, cake is a good distraction. But yeah, so, um, yeah, take that out. I can't, I can't keep the Senate from cake. We've been working so hard all year. Ice cream cake. Yes. <laughs> Maybe following this <laughs> Yeah, so guys, guys, I'm going to continue. Power through this. All right, so we, we picked the project back up after we talked to Dr. Sam, did research into local pharmacies, benchmarked other schools that are considered our peer institutions, and found that a delivery service would be very feasible. We have since contacted certain local pharmacies and engaged in some final negotiations. The project is basically good to go. Continue. So, um, our peer institutions tend to offer two different kinds of services. You can tell I've kind of picked up my speed with cake in the room. Uh, so they either offer a full, a full service pharmacy when they're a larger, well-funded school that can kind of support it. Full service pharmacies tend to have a comprehensive stock. They have prescriptions on staff, and they need a high, a high daily order volume to kind of maintain, maintain themselves economic-wise. Um, these, these institutions also offer prescription delivery. So, go on. Prescription delivery is actually a much more feasible option for smaller schools, schools with our similar population. Um, it can be done via partnership with local pharmacies. Basically, there's a form of consent students have to sign. You can see, a ver you can see one such form at the end of this report in Appendix D, I believe it is. Um, these pharmacies tend to have afternoon delivery, so if you order in the morning, you can get your prescription by that afternoon. And again, they come at no additional student cost because they are a benefit, a business benefit to whichever pharmacy they're partnering with. So this is feasible for a moderate population institution such as us. So after doing this research, we wrote up a letter. Again, this is visible in the report. I believe it was written by Kristen. It's pretty fantastic. Um, we delivered it to local pharmacies, namely CVS, Rite Aid, and Walgreens with offers of 
kind of setting up one of these delivery services, and we were contacted back by CBS's dig uh, digital CBS's uh, district manager Todd Picor, I believe his name was. Um, but he expressed interest in establishing a delivery service. Basically, the only cost for students is a copay cost you would normally pay when ordering prescriptions. The rest could be covered under health insurance. And finally, again, we would need the same kind of form of consent to be available. Since then, we've spoken to RPI's medical director. Both parties are interested in setting up this service. They're more or less waiting for our endorsement to move forward. So our recommendations, as outlined in the report, we want to set up a delivery service over a full-service pharmacy. Full-service pharmacy would be costly. A delivery service is feasible for an institution of our size and could come at no additional cost to students. Um, payment, as based on our conversation with Dr. Lawrence, primary payment would be covered by RPI's health insurance plan with a copay charge to, our, to students' bursar accounts. This is flexible. This might be up for change as the administration works on it but that's kind of what was outlined to us by the medical director. And finally, we recommend establishing this service through CBS as they've expressed interest in moving forward. So I have the same, almost the same list of thank yous as I had for excuse policy last week. Student Life Committee's been working very hard on all these projects. I want to give a special nod to Lexi Rindoni. She's been the chair of the Health Services Subcommittee even as a non-senator, she's been putting in incredibly professional, professional work, and I've been happy to work with you this year. Um, beyond that, I guess we can move to questions. Yep. Yeah. Floor is open. I'll be doing a queue. Some of these I'll defer to Lexi to give her the chance to speak. So you mentioned how um, health, um, a lot of the costs will be uh, covered by RPI's health insurance plan. What if you're health insurance is not coming through RPI. So this was basically an option outlined to us by the medical director. It's our current recommendation. If your health service wasn't covered by RPI, the consent form, I believe, you might be able to elaborate on this, but I believe yeah. it waives your insurance. If you, there's, so that you use that. there's a consent form. I believe I put it in the appendix on the report if you guys want to look at it. But I believe the procedure of most of the schools that we benchmark, you had to fill out this consent form, and then the school had to fax over whatever health insurance information you had, whether it's from the school itself or it's from your own insurance. But the deal is you're not going to have to pay for any insurance related fees with this kind of service. The only pay that you're going to have to do is the copay that you'd pay at any normal pharmacy. All right. Um, are these one of the requirements of this kind of service is a high volume of prescriptions. Um, what if as a small school we can't meet that? Does that mean that That was for a full service volume? pharmacy. Delivery services are commonly used when you only have a moderate to low rate. And also just to add to that when we were talking to the CBS district supervisor last Monday, he really emphasized that the CBS I'm calling Avenue needs all the business it can get, so really they would appreciate partnering with RPI. Like he, he perceived it as a benefit if they were to start partnering with us. So I don't think that'll be an issue. Peter? Um, looking over the document in the full like details uh, benchmarking, Siena, which is the one that uses CVS, has been left off of that list. I feel like that would be the most compelling benchmarking to have in full detail. Might have been an omission on our part, but I know we look, I know we looked into it in committee. All yeah, review, yeah. All review our a small table. And put that into the final proposal. That we, um, we might have accidentally forgot to. We actually had a separate document, I think, that had Sienna. So mm -hmm. okay. I can in show that to Informing the report, I translated that document over to the official report file and pretty much transcribed all our benchmarking. Okay, I just figured that one would be probably the most convincing. Since yeah, they use the did. same pharmacy. Yeah, James yeah. did a lot of benchmarking for that, so we definitely have it. I'm just curious, uh, where would uh, the students be able to pick up the prescription? So would it be delivered to the health center or directly to the student? Currently, I believe the plan is to deliver it to the health center. Some, some schools do offer home delivery, but that wasn't in our discussion at this time. Other questions? Can you go back a slide? couple questions. One is, what if the prescription is coming from my primary care physician, not from the health services? Will it still be delivered to campus? 
that is a good question. I think that's I think that's doable. Again, yeah. if you have a prescription, I think you'd be able to file the prescription in the health center. Health center can still arrange for the delivery through the pharmacy. If you have like the primary care provider print out a prescription for you, I haven't like talked to this officially with Dr. Lawrence, but I'm sure you'd be able to give it to the health center and they'd be able to fax it over to CVS. Um, Dr. Lawrence is in the process of talking to the bursar about mm -hmm, doing yeah. student payments through the bursar account, so it would make it a lot easier for students as well as CDS. And he's also going to discuss the other logistics, um, such as you know how are students going to call. Like for instance, some of the partnerships that we looked at, like RITs with Wegmans, the students called the pharmacy personally, but other services such as like Sienna, I believe the health center fax over prescriptions. So I think. Either way, it would be able to be arranged. So just to sum that up really quick, again, Dr. Lawrence is working on kind of finalizing this. We've established the contact between him and CVS. Um, at this point, honestly, it's basically you can file your prescriptions in the health center the way you would be able to with a normal pharmacy. Health center could also write you those prescriptions, but it doesn't necessarily have to be through RPI Health Services. At that point, they could, or they could arrange for the delivery, and that could come either later that day, next day, pretty much whenever possible. Clinton? So everything would be run through the health center. So like, um, I know oftentimes um, you can just call your doctor and he can uh, give you know, the pharmacy a phone call to refill a prescription. So a student would have to have their personal physician go through the health center and the health center would contact the pharmacy. That might not even be necessary. Not I mean, depending on the nature of the partnership that's set up, the health center could have a service where if you arrange for this through your doctor, you could call the health center yourself, or your doctor could even, you could even tell your doctor that you're using the RPI CVS partnership and CVS will deliver it for you. Oh. Yeah, the CVS dish or supervisor is pretty chill. Like, you can even ask Melanie about it. He was a pretty cool guy. So, I, he was definitely up to negotiation. So, I think these are good points to bring up. Like, you know, if your prescription is provided by a doctor, could you just call in instead of having this health center? We can definitely mention that. So. Um, this might not be relevant, but why can't the health center charge your bursar now? The health center doesn't even do prescription delivery right now. The most they do is over-the-counter medication, and I guess, th I believe they have some sample prescriptions that are commonly ordered, but their stock's very limited. But for, like, other charges, why can't they charge your bursar? I wouldn't know. I think they do, but it's, like, the common service. fee that you pay per semester. So it's yeah. not like you're constantly bringing in fees to the health center. It's like one big fee, and then that's all There's you There's a, I believe it's $270 um, health service fee that's paid by all undergraduates. Yeah. The, graduate, the graduate service fee is slightly different. I couldn't give the exact number. But that covers most of their current services. Okay, um, back to Sean. There are different fees that the health center could um, charge. If you get crutches from them or you have to purchase, I don't know, blood work done or not blood work, but there are different testings that they can do that they would charge your, um, your account for. I think what this is more getting into is how we would transfer the service from RPI to CVS to pay for the prescription. Yeah. Yeah, so, so basically when you're picking up, when you're ordering a prescription normally from a pharmacy, there's a copay, which is basically, it's a cost outside your insurance that goes to the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. This copay would still be maintained so that CVS can earn a profit. So basically, whenever you need to, whenever you need to get a prescription, it's almost as if you were at the pharmacy getting that prescription, so and that's what we're talking about. Okay, and pay CVS for us, and like the students. Oh, I understand how that works. I was just asking about the bursar. Yeah. But my my question goes with the bursar too. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a thing that makes a limit on the amount you can spend? Versus, uh, on the, there's a minimum required ten dollar limit. There's a minimum requirement of ten dollars to be able to use your bursar account. So, how'd that work in terms of co-payments that were less than ten dollars? I don't think. Yeah, there is. What was that? Yeah, there's a limit. There's yeah, there's definitely a limit. There's definitely a limit. And again, that's something that I think the health center will work out. Yeah, they're um, working it out like right now. Right now so. Mm -hmm. We'll know more once when Dr. Lawrence gets back to me. Again, the remember, the Student Senate, we don't set these policies directly. We recommend to the Health Center that they proceed in this certain way. This is simply the avenue that they're currently pursuing. So 
as as Lexi said, as we learn more, we'll 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 make that information more public. Other questions? Clarifying points? Chase? Did uh, none of the other pharmacies respond? Correct. CVS was the one we heard back from, and it's at a promising stage. Any other questions? Well, if you have them, hold on to them. I'll read the motion first. Lorenzo Union, 44th Student Senate, whereas the Student Senate recognizes student need for a centralized convenient location to obtain uh, prescription medication, whereas the Student Senate has contracted local pharmacies, contact local pharmacies and established communication lines between the Health Center and CVS, whereas the Student Senate has determined to live a delivery service to be feasible and no broad cost to the student body, resolves to recommend the establishment of a weekday delivery service between the Rensselaer Student Health Center and a local pharmacy such as CVS Rite Aid or Walgreens. So moved by the Student Life Committee. Are there any questions on the motion or the proposal in front of us? Seeing none, we'll move to vote. All those in favor? options are not flexible or not on demand and there's also a concern about students with pricing inconsistency they might get one price to the airport like say $23 one way then the next time they use it it might be $30 which I've experienced so far um, and then also um, as we'll go into later on there's a Senate survey results that showed that there's significant taxi um, student ridership um, so just to outline the current transportation options, I'm sure you've used a variety of these. There's the bus system, shuttle, um, RPI ambulance for medical emergencies, um, RPI public safety for late night escort services, and as well as personal vehicles like Kristen was for me today. <laughs> um, and the concerns with all of these is that a lot of these are limited to specific applications. So for instance, the ambulance and the public safety is only for um, health and safety emergencies. Um, also, there's a lack of transportation in all these during off hours, I guess, besides public safety. So, I mean, in the case where somebody may be drunk in a far location and they don't have a ride, we need some kind of service that students could use. Um, just to be real, we're in college. Um, and also, if you think about other options outside a taxi, like I know you had the Zipcar proposal go through a couple weeks ago, the thing with a taxi service is it would benefit students that don't have a driver's license, and this is especially a concern for international students who often cannot obtain a license in the US. Um, so just to give an overview of the Senate survey of the fall 2013, about half of the students use taxis, um, and 30% plan to use them in the future. Um, and we believe that if we establish a flat rate, we could even improve 
uh, improve the retention of students as well as increase the number of students that use taxis. We also did a social, social media outreach on Reddit and the main concern with students in taxi services was that there was a pricing inconsistency. So like I was saying before, with one cab company, they would get one price to the airport and another they would get a different price. So students would really appreciate it if they could just have one straight up price for a taxi service. And we believe establishing a flat rate system will help fix this. Um, there has been a previous partnership in Troy that RPI wasn't affiliated with, but it benefited RPI students. Troy's in, uh, Business Improvement District um, worked with Downtown Troy and Black and White Taxi to establish a $4 flat rate between RPI and Downtown Troy. And it was uh, $1 for each additional person, so if you had three people in the vehicle, it'd be a $6 rate. Um, and I asked the director, Elizabeth Young, why they don't have this service anymore, and she just said it was simply because it was due to a lack of advertising by black and white taxi. Not many RPI students knew about it because neither Troy did nor the taxi company really told RPI students that it was available. Um, and as a result, this service was discontinued and it's no longer available. We believe that if we establish a flat rate system here at RPI, we could succeed and keep it long lasting because we could advertise a lot better than black and white taxi would. Um, so within this flat rate, we see various potential for expansion. One would be to provide further ad advertisement through various social media sources as well as on-campus avenues. Um, we also think that we could establish some kind of health-related transport. This kind of coincides with the health center the origin of this project was to get mainly off-campus students that were sick transported to the health center. So as we establish this service, we might look into that option again and possibly get a fee waivered for that kind of service, but that's something that we'd look into the, in the future. In addition, we'd also like to expand so that students could use their RAD dollars to pay for the taxi service instead of cash or credit card. Um, so the procedure, just briefly how this went about, like I said, it kind of started with the idea of we need students to be transported to the health center because they're sick and they can't get there and can't get excuses or prescriptions for their class. Part of this was resolved through the excuse policy which was passed last week and another part of this will probably be resolved through the prescription delivery, but there's also some room, say, if off-campus students do need to get to the health center for treatment, we could possibly establish some kind of system. This wasn't, we went to like public safety and some, asked a few, I think a few other people, they said, you know, health-related transport is a liability issue, we can't do this. So what happened was Dr. Sams, I think Kyle talked to him, and he suggested having a taxi partnership. And we started investigating this further, did some benchmarking of schools, and found that other schools similar to us had some flat rate taxi services benchmarked, which you can kind of, I think I've outlined a table in the document. Um, and then we also took some rates of black and white taxi so that we could establish rates that we would like to see for our type of partnership. Um, so just an overview, if you guys look at the document, you can see all the specific locations we designated in the taxis, but really we um, wanted some locations in Albany and Troy to be serviced as well as having a discount for off-campus housing. So we couldn't really target a flat rate for off-campus housing because we don't know, you know how far away. Some people live in Waterville, some people live in Albany, some people live two minutes away. But we thought that it would be reasonable to have a 30% discount for this kind of purpose, which I outlined on the document. Pickup locations would be at student discretion during the weekdays. But on the weekends, we thought it would be good for the service if we had a designated pickup location during peak hours that students might want to go out and do stuff off campus. Um, and this would just, you know, one, help advertise the partnership as well as benefit the students. And the payment method currently would be at the discretion of the taxi company. I, the cab companies I've used only accept cash, so it might, it might vary depending on the, which company we would partner with but we will encourage RAD because I think that would be something that's beneficial, as well as some of the schools we benchmarked, I think it was RIT, use similar money to RAD. 
Um, so moving forward, say this proposal would be passed through the Senate, um, we would pass this to the administration. We have contact information in the appendix and we plan on encouraging the administration to contact these local cab companies to start negotiating on flat rate prices that we suggested. Um, and if we do get some flat rates established, we would then expand towards advertising through social media and other sources. So with that said, I don't have a thank you slide because I've never done Senate presentations, so I'm sorry. I'm not thankful, I guess. But anyway, <laughs> I am thankful for the cake, I guess, because it's all cake. But one well, comment before we go to discussion, the exact proposal for the flat rate fees is outlined in the report. So the fees are enumerated, the recommendations are enumerated there. Yeah, I, do, I just decided not to put the, all the fees in a presentation because it's a lot to read off. So you guys can read through it. Um, but anyway, does anybody have any questions? I'm going to open the floor. Uh, first in the queue, we'll do Greg. All right. So I was wondering how long ago was the service that was discontinued that uh, Elizabeth that you contacted? Was she did not designate how long ago it was. She okay. just simply, I mean, she she was in the process of retiring or resigning from bid when I had gotten in contact with her. So it was just a couple short emails. Um, she recommended that we contact Black and White Taxi because she thought that they would be, be willing to do another flat rate service again. But she did not say how long ago this was or when it was established or anything like that. Okay. Thank you. Great. I'm um, just wondering where the 30% um, discount um, came from. If you look at the benchmarking that we did, um, they have locations not covered in taxi fees on one of the schools that we found, and they used a 30% discount. So that's where we got that number from. Other questions? Um, for, I don't know if this would be on the screen, but just a proposal, but would it go, um, the, would the agreement with the, whatever cap company you decide to go with uh, come up for like a, a rebid every two years or something? So like if one company, like, so you're not locked in with one company forever? That's kind I've of... I've got to answer that. So there's, this isn't really set in stone. Um, this kind of agreement can always be revisited by either party. It's just a question of kind of establishing it right now. It could even be established with multiple companies if other companies wanted to get out, get in on the deal. That's more up to the administration than to us. Okay. Yeah. Has has any um, cab companies shown any interest so far? We were thinking about contacting cab companies. Ernesto attempted to contact the manager of Black and White. He never got back to us, right? Nope. Yeah, because Elizabeth Young gave us the contact information to the owner of Black and White. That's the only one that we've tried. But Kyle and I discussed this. We thought it would be best if we didn't contact the cab companies as students because it'd be more convincing if we had administrators contact. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if these are acceptable rates to companies in the area? No, these are just suggested rates that um, my subcommittee thought up. We practically computed the rates based upon the black and white taxi rates as well as the benchmarking that we did so that they would be a little bit less or a little bit at a discount to the current black and white rates as well as being similar to other schools. So what we hope to do with this document is that the administration can look at it and if they start negotiating prices with a cab company, they can use that as a guideline. But our ultimate goal, I believe I said in the proposal, is to have the flat rates be at somewhat of a discount to regular rates because we're RPI students. So. Who's the subcommittee? The I got that. So, um, Student Life Committee has been operating with a subcommittee structure. I won't go into all the details, but the Health Services Subcommittee has been chaired by Lexi Rindoni um, and contains Kristen, Claire, Conrad Mosel, non senator, Melanie Totus, um, Ernesto, and James Whalen. The Health Services Committee did the tax proposal? Yeah. Yes. Because okay. it originated, like I was trying to explain, it originated. Um, from the idea that we wanted people that were sick to have transportation to the health center, and it kind of expanded way beyond that. So. Basically, each of our projects was developed in a subcommittee setting. So, any other questions? Yeah. Peter, um, for the proposal document, 
Uh, I'd like to move to strike international students from saying finally international students or those lacking a driver's license could not take advantage of potential car share or rental services because they can. They can use their foreign driver's license and uh, hit, uh, at least since I worked on the car share project, um, Zipcar and Enterprise Car Share, both major ones, have an option for international drivers to submit their foreign driver's license and a his history of their driving record from their um, home nation, and they're able to use the program. Paul and Kristen. Uh, yeah, just with uh, what Peter said, um, there's that, and also New York state law allows you to drive with any foreign license in the state of New York as long as you aren't a state resident. Uh, I think the point we're trying to make, it should be worded more clearly, is that there are many international students that don't have driver's license, period. Um, we have a lot of students that come from large cities. Uh, I, I talked to people from Hong Kong who have never driven a car, ever. So what I'll do in response to that, I'll amend it to finally students lacking a driver's license cannot yeah. take advantage, etc. Yeah, we, the reason why we pointed out international students, I think it was like Kristen who brought it up because she's a grad student and meets a lot of internationals that they just don't have driver's license. So. Point of information. Um, yeah. The et cetera was the end of the sentence. What was it? So you said et cetera. So the yeah, it was in the sentence. So, so you read that? So finally, students lacking a driver's license could not take advantage of potential car share or rental services in the capital region. Okay, so my question is, um, do we want to make it competitive with the already going car share products for Canada? So now the administration will have two proposals and now they're kind of competing against so that phrase there. Well, we, per we initially per uh, proceeded on this project knowing that it fits a very different niche than car sharing. Car sharing is applicable for people who want to take long distance trips, people who, well, we, we went through the whole proposal two weeks ago. This is more looking at an existing service and making it more attractive to RPI students who have on-demand needs. So as, as, as clear to me and you, but this proposal is not clear. Do you feel, do you guys think a point should be outlined? Well, Chuck and I discussed you're speaking this on times. behalf of the Student Life Committee, so you have to decide whether or not it's friendly. I see Mike's point. Uh, for people who are not as involved in the project as we are, it does open the comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess I wouldn't be opposed if that was stricken. I don't think it really changes much in the document. Uh, but that is so you, you, your concern is that this sentence invites the comparison? Yes. Yes. Then yeah, I'd be happy to strike it. Do you or anyone in the committee have a concern? No, I, I think we just put that in there in case, okay. I feel like a lot of people would have brought it up, like, oh, why not car share? We just wanted to distinguish the difference between car share mm -hmm. and taxi, but we can, Eliminate that if you guys think it's necessary. Okay. Q is open and empty. All right, I'm going to read the motion. The Rents are Union 44th Student Senate. Whereas the Student Senate is aware of limitations in existing transportation options and recognizes the importance of flexible on demand transportation for students in the Capital District. Whereas students have expressed significant ridership of local taxi services and a flat rate partnership will benefit taxi companies offering increased ridership. Whereas a flat rate partnership will benefit Rensselaer students guaranteeing consistent pricing and offering an attractive transportation option. Whereas a flat rate partnership will set a precedent for further cooperation. Resolves to recommend the establishment of a flat rate agreement as outlined in the attached report assembled by the Student Life Committee. So moved by the Student Life Committee. Are there any other questions or discussion points for this motion? Seeing none, we'll move to vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion passes 19-0. All right, final motion of the day and of the 44th Student Senate. Actually, that's not sure. Anthony, would you like to talk a little bit about the initial bylaw changes? 
Um, so the Sinjur Squad recently uh, revisited um, since they were pretty outdated. Um, also, with the changes to the Indian Constitution that's going up for vote um, on Jim Week, uh, we'd like to make some changes to reflect that. Um, seeing as the selection committee is now aligned in the Constitution rather than our bylaws, if we left the bylaws the way they are, that would cause conflict of interest because there's two different definitions of the selection committee. Um, we also just updated the fact that the uh, J Board will be able to vote for their <coughs> Vice Chair by themselves without having to go in front of the Senate, um, since the Vice Chair will already be coming in front of the Senate and can be questioned um, as the intended Vice Chair um, when they're confirmed in the fall. So those are the major two changes. Everything else will probably stay the same, which is minor wording. All right. Lorenzo Union 44 Student Senate. Whereas the Judicial Board bylaws are out of date and difficult to read, approves the Judicial Board bylaws on the condition that the Union Constitution put forth for a vote during the 2014 GM Week elections is passed. So moved by Greg, seconded by Kyle. Are there any questions? Like Anthony said, um, took out selection committee. Uh, they can select their own vice chair. Uh, and this will be conditional based on the Union Constitution because we don't want to have bylaws passed and not have a Constitution that would allow it to work. So we're just no judicial board. Oh no, man. Yes. Sorry to complicate things, but could we split it so we could just approve the vice chair change regardless of the union constitution change so that's that happens? Question. Yes, we can. Do you want to do that? So it's guaranteed. Okay. Yeah, we can split the question. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. We're discussing just the vice chair motion uh, to pass right now. Uh, the reading, actually the wording would stay the same, so it doesn't matter if it's conditional or not. Any questions? I understand. Yeah, the motion. Uh, we split the question, but I'll reread it. Just, uh, the rents of the union, 44th student senate, whereas the judicial board bylaws are out of date and difficult to read, approves the judicial board bylaws on the condition that the union constitution put forth for a vote during 2014 GM week, elections has passed. So moved by Kyle, so moved by Greg, and second by Kyle. And we've divided the question, meaning we're the vote right now is pertaining to vice chair. Uh, so if we vote yes, it goes immediately in the bylaws, and it doesn't matter if the union constitution passes or not. Does everyone understand? I have a question. Uh, how long are the terms for the J board? Uh, it's a year, and then they have to come up for coverage again. So we end when? January, January. Yeah, the terms are staggered from the GM and PU, uh, just so there's no conflict, essentially. So if there is an issue during GM week, the judicial board chair isn't being elected at the same time, just to make it easy or chosen. Other questions? All right, so we're just voting for the vice chair right now. All those in favor? is settled and that passes. I'll make a note of that in the motion itself. So the vice chair part is approved. All right, so now for the overall motion pertaining to the, all the bylaws um, with the exclusion of the selection committee. Any questions before we move to vote? All those in favor? Those opposed? Motion passes as a whole 20 0. <laughs> All right. All right, who has a laptop? So if you have a laptop, you should take it out and fill out the end of year dinner when it's good. Since so you're basically all here. If you haven't done it, you should take out your laptop and pass it to the person to your left or right who hasn't done it. Also, if you've already filled it out, slash if you're filling it out now, we'll definitely have free times. Uh, 
in two weeks on Monday during the Senate meeting time because there's not going to be a Senate meeting. Because we won't, during GM week and the next week, technically, because there's a whole new Senate, so the time resets. So it's an open time slot for you, because I know, because you're here. So take that into account when you fill it out. So what you forgot about that? If you forgot about that, you can <laughs> Okay, I'm going to do all the numbers. So just take a couple of minutes. Um, if you're already done, just relax. Is the second one? Did you send out two? Yeah. I sent out one yesterday. That's the up-to-date one. What about the original one? It's kind of just grab that. It's a different day. Do you, you're one you of get them. an imaginary <laughs> sticker uh, GM approval? Yes. Is this in the final meeting you missed? What? Final meeting? Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> also, look at, the, look at the minutes from last meeting, because uh, we need to approve those. There you should be, there's one on each side, like a uh, normal. Also, probably next week, early this week, Jabari's going to send me the minutes for this meeting. I'm going to send them out, uh, and we'll be approving by email vote. That's okay. We can do that for minutes. Why don't we do that for minutes? Yes, we just can. Although, otherwise, there's no way to officially approve them. Yeah, we have a meeting, Tyler. So, next set of minutes. Yeah, but then we'll be having to have minutes and I'll see the body for which the minutes are taken from. Between that and legal side. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, the last, the last Senate time. meeting will actually take the rest of our lives. Yeah. And Tina made a good point to me, actually. Be aware of the next, I forget the dates exactly, but one is Easter weekend and the other one is Relay for Life weekend. Now, it's not the whole weekend, but you have to be aware of uh, when those are coming up. Easter is three Sundays. It's April 20th. Would you like the calendar? No, no, no. Please, just open it. She doesn't have my Oh, yeah. It's on it. Name looking. favorite is here. Speech. Speech. Yeah. Go to approval of minutes. 
the minutes have made their way around, I hope they've been passed. If you have in front of you, send them to me. All right. Do you have minutes? There should be one more step. They have a lot of bylaws. Anyone have minutes over there? Yeah, there are minutes here. They have some seconds. Lisa, is that it? Oh, they were never viewed by the sun. Got it. All right, back to business. We're going to move to approval minutes. All those in favor? Who's on the Quidditch team? All those opposed? We're going to have to. Looks like we're going to have to remove two. There's going to be a monocle. The minutes pass. Alright, we're going to right, gonna skip the last part of my report uh, for later. Right now we're going to go to committee and constituent reports. Tim, how are elections going? They're not started yet, but they will go great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so on Saturday, nomination forms, candidates forms, and party affiliation forms are due. Um, Sunday will be the primary debates. And if you are running for re-election, please sign up and full sit. So how many hours do you have to sign up for? We have to do two hours of service. Okay. Um, you can also sign up for GM Week to do your service, but I would prefer to do the Okay. Is that it? Yeah, there's a question. Yes, there's uh, debate on Sunday, is it? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Can we have the room reserved? Uh, yes. Okay. When did you say signature or nomination for 3 p.m. Saturday. Okay. Okay. Shoshana, Senate Communications. Um, so last meeting, um, no one came except Paul. I was very lonely. Um, but I worked on the, the yearly review of what communication has done and worked on some documents so that whoever's in the position next year can get a good amount of direction um, and hit the ground running. Um, I started working on archiving our Senate documents. I did too good of a job and I used up all of the archiving paper that the archives had. So they're getting another shipment and they will email me when that's ready so I can continue. Yay. Thank you. Um, I think we all want to know, can you two talk after? I think we can. <laughs> Denying that. <laughs> John, we're going to go to AAC. Alrighty, so the uh, syllabus database is pretty much uh, all cleared. Uh, the faculty senate is in full support of it. Uh, the registrar is in full support of it. So now I've contacted the department heads, and basically what's going to happen is they're going to uh, help me acquire all the syllabi from the professors, and then uh, Chuck and I were discussing uh, potentially giving the actual all of the syllabi to the web services group, who will then uh, just put it online somewhere. Um, so. It's pretty much uh, going to be completed by next semester, so I'll continue to work on that um, and should be all set. All right, good job. Uh, anyone on eboard or no eboard business? I don't even think. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> all right, FSC, Tina? Uh, we had our concluding meeting last week, so we're working on our yearly review. Um, hopefully, that'll be done before this Thursday when we won't have to meet again. Um, but that's about it. Oh, also there was a broken vending machine in Sage that was reported to us over the weekend, so emailed auxiliary services and hopefully that vending machine will be working again soon. Thank you. Kyle. So, I mean, we voted to approve excuse policy last week. We voted to approve the pharmacy proposal and taxi proposal this week. I just want to thank everyone for all the hard work they put in because this year was a resounding success for the committee. Um, at this point, all that's left to do, as with Tina and Shoshana, is to conclude our archiving. SLC will not need to meet again. Um, I might get something special together near the end of the year for you guys, but we'll see. Um, this should hopefully be done before, before Thursday or Wednesday, some, sometime in the near future, so Shosh can archive it properly. But again, thank you guys, and extend the thanks to all the non-senators who became involved in our committee as well. It was a great year. Thank you. Gabe, you are up. <coughs> hey, you're awesome. Gabe, Gabe, Gabe. Yeah, so this week we lost two concerto screens in the CII and the Mueller Center. So we're making an e-board proposal to replace five computers that have 
since like gone offline. Um, that'll hopefully be tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, I have a feeling it won't go down too well, but we'll see how that turns out. Um, other than that, the RSN is going well. I scheduled a meeting with the registrar for next Thursday, so we'll see how data acquisition goes. The site is ready to go. It's just we don't want to release something that's completely empty because then no one will use it. So if we can get that data flowing, then that will be great. Yeah, that's all I have. Thank you. James, IFC. Uh, nothing this week. All right. Lisa, can help. OK. Um, so we're looking to have a Greek softball game at some point to be determined once we're done with the softball game. Um, this isn't a pan health thing, but it's, um, it's highly involved with women, so I feel like I mentioned it. SWE in the Women's Mentor Program on April 15th and the DCC 318 from 7 to 8 are having a program to talk about women's success, so you guys should go, everyone, men included. And um, uh, we're still doing Letters for Letters on Thursdays. And also, uh, there's, it, they started this last year, it's called Annual No Milk for Joseph. Um, it's a boy who has super strict dietary needs for some uh, sickness that he has, and they did it last year, and they reached out to the Greek community to um, look for volunteers, and they're doing it again this year, and they're asking for volunteers. It's during GM week, it's April 11th, so it's, you know, that Friday, so I totally understand that everyone's busy, but I figured I'd pass it along in case you guys are interested in volunteering. It's a great cause. It's at the Italian Community Center. It's pasta, dinner, slash lunch, so you can get some free food out of it. Um, if you want more information about it, email me or text me, and I'll be happy to pass it along. And yeah, definitely email me. I'll okay. Spread around. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's a lot of the philanthropy events coming up in April, and um, <laughs> so keep an eye out for posters for those. And yeah, that's it. Okay. Kristen, grad council. Uh, the graduate council has two more events. This semester, we have a movie night coming up, we are showing Gravity, and then we have our Pub and Games night, which had a speed bump, but not a roadblock, it's been resolved. Thank you everyone, <laughs> thank you Joe. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it? All right. Great. So, this is the last Speech. meeting of the Student Senate. Gabe, we need a we need a feature zoom on Chuck's emotional face. Speech. All right, so this is the last student senate meeting. Uh, I just want to say that I've really enjoyed the year. I've been involved with Senate for four years, uh, and this is the most fun I've ever had. We've had our ups and downs. We've had some very serious topics and some more whimsical ones. But I just want to say that all of you uh, have really made this a fantastic year. This isn't, I'm just basically convened the meeting and get you guys uh, in the room. You do all the work, you put all the effort in, and you've done a fantastic job. If you look back over the past year, you've done some fantastic things. Uh, Student Life has done great challenges, great things with taxi, pharmaceuticals, and even uh, excuse policy. We have great things happening even going from eggs downstairs and fathers to a full zip cart proposal, or a car sharing proposal. Krishan has done great, uh, great strides with communication. We've updated things we haven't done in years. Uh, John, you've done a lot of work. Uh, I know you don't really have a committee right now, but <laughs> <laughs> you've done a fantastic job and I really appreciate the hard work you've put in all year. Uh, I know you've done a great job, so I really appreciate your help. And just like everyone who's involved, uh, you've really made this a fantastic year. I appreciate all your hard work and effort. Uh, so thank you, you've made this worthwhile. So with that, I'm going to adjourn the meeting and officially conclude the business of the 44th Student Senate.